The British Empire comprised the dominions, colonies, protectorates, mandates, and other territories ruled or administered by the United Kingdom and its predecessor states. It began with the overseas possessions and trading posts established by England in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. At its height in the 19th and early 20th centuries, it was the largest empire in history and, for a century, was the foremost global power. By 1913, the British Empire held sway over 412 million people, 23% of the world population at the time, and by 1920, it covered 35.5 million square kilometers, 13.7 million square mi, 24% of the Earth's total land area. As a result, its constitutional, legal, linguistic, and cultural legacy is widespread. At the peak of its power, it was described as the empire on which the sun never sets, as the sun was always shining on at least one of its territories. During the Age of Discovery in the 15th and 16th centuries, Portugal and Spain pioneered European exploration of the globe, and in the process established large overseas empires. Envious of the great wealth these empires generated, England, France, and the Netherlands began to establish colonies and trade networks of their own in the Americas and Asia. A series of wars in the 17th and 18th centuries with the Netherlands and France left England, Britain, following the 1707 Act of Union with Scotland, the dominant colonial power in North America. Britain became a major power in the Indian subcontinent after the East India Company's conquest of Mughal Bengal at the Battle of Plessy in 1757. The American War of Independence resulted in Britain losing some of its oldest and most populous colonies in North America by 1783, while retaining control of British North America, now Canada, and territories in and near the Caribbean and the British West Indies, British colonial expansion turned towards Asia, Africa, and the Pacific. After the defeat of France in the Napoleonic Wars, 1803-1815, Britain emerged as the principal naval and imperial power of the 19th century and expanded its imperial holdings. It pursued trade concessions in China and Japan and territory in Southeast Asia. The Great Game and Scramble for Africa also ensued. The period of relative peace, 1815 to 1914, during which the British Empire became the global hegemon was later described as Plax Britannica, Latin for British peace. Alongside the formal control that Britain exerted over its colonies, its dominance of much of world trade and of its oceans meant that it effectively controlled the economies of and readily enforced its interests in many regions, such as Asia and Latin America. It also came to dominate the Middle East. Increasing degrees of autonomy were granted to its white settler colonies, some of which were formally reclassified as dominions by the 1920s. By the start of the 20th century, Germany and the United States had begun to challenge Britain's economic lead. Military, economic, and colonial tensions between Britain and Germany were major causes of the First World War, during which Britain relied heavily on its empire. The conflict placed enormous strain on its military, financial, and manpower resources. Although the empire achieved its largest territorial extent immediately after the First World War, Britain was no longer the world's preeminent industrial or military power. In the Second World War, Britain's colonies in East Asia and Southeast Asia were occupied by the Empire of Japan. Despite the final victory of Britain and its allies, the damage to British prestige and the British economy helped accelerate the decline of the empire. India, Britain's most valuable and populous possession, achieved independence in 1947 as part of a larger decolonization movement in which Britain granted independence to most territories of the empire. The Suez Crisis of 1956 confirmed Britain's decline as a global power and the handover of Hong Kong to China on July 1st. 1997 symbolized for many the end of the British Empire, though 14 overseas territories that are remnants of the empire remain under British sovereignty. After independence, many former British colonies, along with most of the Dominions, joined the Commonwealth of Nations, a free association of independent states. Fifteen of these, including the United Kingdom, retain the same person as the monarch, currently King Charles III. The foundations of the British Empire were laid when England and Scotland were separate kingdoms. In 1496, King Henry VII of England, following the successes of Spain and Portugal in overseas exploration, commissioned John Cabot to lead an expedition to discover a northwest passage to Asia via the North Atlantic. 
Cabot sailed in 1497, five years after the first voyage of Christopher Columbus, and made landfall on the coast of Newfoundland. He believed he had reached Asia, and there was no attempt to find a colony. Cabot led another voyage to the Americas the following year but did not return. It is unknown what happened to his ships. No further attempts to establish English colonies in the Americas were made until well into the reign of Queen Elizabeth I during the last decades of the 16th century. In the meantime, Henry VIII's 1533 statute and restraint of appeals had declared that this realm of England is an empire. The Protestant Reformation turned England and Catholic Spain into implacable enemies. In 1562, Elizabeth I encouraged the privateers John Hawkins and Francis Drake to engage in slave raiding attacks against Spanish and Portuguese ships off the coast of West Africa to establish an Atlantic slave trade. This effort was rebuffed and later, as the Anglo-Spanish Wars intensified, Elizabeth I gave her blessing to further privateering raids against Spanish ports in the Americas and shipping that was returning across the Atlantic, laden with treasure from the New World. At the same time, influential writers such as Richard Hakluyt and John Dee, who was the first to use the term British Empire, were beginning to press for the establishment of England's empire. By this time, Spain had become the dominant power in the Americas and was exploring the Pacific Ocean. Portugal had established trading posts and forts from the coasts of Africa and Brazil to China, and France had begun to settle the St. Lawrence River area, later to become New France. Although England tended to trail behind Portugal, Spain, and France in establishing overseas colonies, it carried out its first modern colonization, referred to as the Munster Plantations, in 16th century Ireland by settling it with English and Welsh Protestant settlers. England had already colonized part of the country, following the Norman invasion of Ireland in 1169. Several people who helped establish the Munster Plantations later played a part in the early colonization of North America, particularly a group known as the West Country Men. In 1578, Elizabeth I granted a patent to Humphrey Gilbert for discovery and overseas exploration. That year, Gilbert sailed for the Caribbean to engage in piracy and establish a colony in North America, but the expedition was aborted before it had crossed the Atlantic. In 1583, he embarked on a second attempt. On this occasion, he formally claimed the harbor of the island of Newfoundland, although no settlers were left behind. Gilbert did not survive the return journey to England and was succeeded by his half-brother, Walter Raleigh, who was granted his patent by Elizabeth in 1584. Later that year, Raleigh founded the Roanoke Colony on the coast of present-day North Carolina, but a lack of supplies caused the colony to fail. In 1603, James VI of Scotland ascended to the English throne and in 1604 negotiated the Treaty of London, ending hostilities with Spain. Now at peace with its main rival, English attention shifted from preying on other nations' colonial infrastructures to the business of establishing its overseas colonies. The British Empire began to take shape during the early 17th century with the English settlement of North America and the smaller islands of the Caribbean and the establishment of joint stock companies, most notably the East India Company, to administer colonies and overseas trade. This period, until the loss of the 13 colonies after the American War of Independence towards the end of the 18th century, has been referred to by some historians as the First British Empire. England's early efforts at colonization in the Americas met with mixed success. An attempt to establish a colony in Guiana in 1604 lasted only two years and failed in its main objective to find gold deposits. Colonies on the Caribbean islands of St. Lucia, 1605, and Grenada, 1609, rapidly folded. The first permanent English settlement in the Americas was founded in 1607 in Jamestown by Captain John Smith and managed by the Virginia Company. The Crown took direct control of the venture in 1624, thereby founding the colony of Virginia. Bermuda was settled and claimed by England as a result of the 1609 shipwreck of the Virginia Company's flagship, while attempts to settle Newfoundland were largely unsuccessful. In 1620, Plymouth was founded as a haven by Puritan religious separatists, later known as the Pilgrims. Fleeing from religious persecution would become the motive for many English would-be colonists to risk the arduous transatlantic voyage. Maryland was established by English Roman Catholics, 1634, Rhode Island, 1636, as a colony tolerant of all religions, and Connecticut, 1639, for Congregationalists. 
England's North American holdings were further expanded by the annexation of the Dutch colony of New Netherland in 1664, following the capture of New Amsterdam, which was renamed New York. Although less financially successful than colonies in the Caribbean, these territories had large areas of good agricultural land and attracted far greater numbers of English emigrants, who preferred their temperate climates. The British West Indies initially provided England's most important and lucrative colonies. Settlements were successfully established in Act. Kits, 1624, Barbados, 1627, and Nevis, 1628, struggled until the Sugar Revolution transformed the Caribbean economy in the mid-17th century. Large sugarcane plantations were first established in the 1640s in Barbados, with assistance from Dutch merchants and Sephardic Jews fleeing Portuguese Brazil. At first, sugar was grown primarily using white indentured labor, but rising costs soon led English traders to embrace the use of imported African slaves. The enormous wealth generated by slave-produced sugar made Barbados the most successful colony in the Americas and one of the most densely populated places in the world. This boom led to the spread of sugar cultivation across the Caribbean, financed the development of non-plantation colonies in North America, and accelerated the growth of the Atlantic slave trade, particularly the triangular trade of slaves, sugar, and provisions between Africa, the West Indies, and Europe. To ensure that the increasingly healthy profits of colonial trade remained in English hands, Parliament decreed in 1651 that only English ships would be able to ply their trade in English colonies. This led to hostilities with the United Dutch provinces a series of Anglo-Dutch wars which would eventually strengthen England's position in the Americas at the expense of the Dutch. In 1655, England annexed the island of Jamaica from the Spanish, and in 1666 succeeded in colonizing the Bahamas. In 1670, Charles II incorporated by royal charter the Hudson's Bay Company, HBC, granting it a monopoly on the fur trade in the area known as Rupert's Land, which would later form a large proportion of the Dominion of Canada. Forts and trading posts established by the HBC were frequently the subject of attacks by the French, who had established their fur trading colony in adjacent New France. Two years later, the Royal African Company was granted a monopoly on the supply of slaves to the British colonies in the Caribbean. The company would transport more slaves across the Atlantic than any other, and significantly grew England's share of the trade, from 33% in 1673 to 74% in 1683. The removal of this monopoly between 1688 and 1712 allowed independent British slave traders to thrive, leading to a rapid escalation in the number of slaves transported. British ships carried a third of all slaves shipped across the Atlantic, approximately 3.5 million Africans until the abolition of the trade by Parliament in 1807. To facilitate the shipment of slaves, forts were established on the coast of West Africa, such as James Island, Accra, and Bunce Island. In the British Caribbean, the percentage of the population of African descent rose from 25% in 1650 to around 80% in 1780 and in the 13 colonies from 10% to 40% over the same period. The transatlantic slave trade played a pervasive role in British economic life and became a major economic mainstay for Western port cities. Ships registered by in Bristol, Liverpool, and London were responsible for the bulk of British slave trading. For the transported, harsh and unhygienic conditions on the slaving ships and poor diets, meant that the average mortality rate during the Middle Passage was one in seven. At the end of the 16th century, England and the Dutch Empire began to challenge the Portuguese Empire's monopoly of trade with Asia, forming private joint stock companies to finance the voyages the English, later British, East India Company and the Dutch East India Company, chartered in 1600 and 1602 respectively. The primary aim of these companies was to tap into the lucrative spice trade, an effort focused mainly on two regions, the East Indies Archipelago and an important hub in the trade network, India. There, they competed for trade supremacy with Portugal and with each other. Although England eclipsed the Netherlands as a colonial power, in the short term the Netherlands' more advanced financial system and the three Anglo-Dutch wars of the 17th century left it with a stronger position in Asia. Hostilities ceased after the Glorious Revolution of 1688 when the Dutch William of Orange ascended the English throne, bringing peace between the Dutch Republic and England. 
A deal between the two nations left the spice trade of the East Indies archipelago to the Netherlands and the textiles industry of India to England, but textiles soon overtook spices in terms of profitability. Peace between England and the Netherlands in 1688 meant the two countries entered the Nine Years' War as allies, but the conflict waged in Europe and overseas between France, Spain, and the Anglo-Dutch alliance left the English a stronger colonial power than the Dutch, who were forced to devote a larger proportion of their military budget to the costly land war in Europe. The death of Charles II of Spain in 1700 and his bequeathal of Spain and its colonial empire to Philip V of Spain, a grandson of the King of France, raised the prospect of the unification of France, Spain, and their respective colonies, an unacceptable state of affairs for England and the other powers of Europe. In 1701, England, Portugal, and the Netherlands sided with the Holy Roman Empire against Spain and France in the War of the Spanish Succession, which lasted for 13 years. In 1695, the Parliament of Scotland granted a charter to the Company of Scotland, which established a settlement in 1698 on the Isthmus of Panama. Besieged by neighboring Spanish colonists of New Granada and affected by malaria, the colony was abandoned two years later. The Darien scheme was a financial disaster for Scotland. A quarter of Scottish capital was lost in the enterprise. The episode had major political consequences, helping to persuade the government of the Kingdom of Scotland of the merits of turning the personal union with England into a political and economic one under the Kingdom of Great Britain established by the Acts of Union 1707. The 18th century saw the newly united Great Britain rise to be the world's dominant colonial power with France becoming its main rival on the imperial stage. Great Britain, Portugal, the Netherlands, and the Holy Roman Empire continued the War of the Spanish Succession, which lasted until 1714 and was concluded by the Treaty of Utrecht. Philip V of Spain renounced his and his descendants' claim to the French throne, and Spain lost its empire in Europe. The British Empire was territorially enlarged. From France, Britain gained Newfoundland and Acadia, and from Spain, Gibraltar, and Menorca. Gibraltar became a critical naval base and allowed Britain to control the Atlantic entry and exit point to the Mediterranean. Spain ceded the rights to the lucrative ascent to Britain. With the outbreak of the Anglo-Spanish War of Jenkins Ear in 1739, Spanish privateers attacked British merchant shipping along the Triangle trade routes. In 1746, the Spanish and British began peace talks with the King of Spain agreeing to stop all attacks on British shipping. However, in the 1750 Treaty of Madrid, Britain lost its slave trading rights in Latin America. In the East Indies, British and Dutch merchants continued to compete in spices and textiles, with textiles becoming the larger trade. By 1720, in terms of sales, the British company had overtaken the Dutch. During the middle decades of the 18th century, there were several outbreaks of military conflict on the Indian subcontinent, as the English East India Company and its French counterpart struggled alongside local rulers to fill the vacuum that had been left by the decline of the Mughal Empire. The Battle of Plessy in 1757, in which the British defeated the Nawaz of Bengal and his French allies, left the British East India Company in control of Bengal and as a major military and political power in India. France was left in control of its enclaves, but with military restrictions and an obligation to support British client states, ending French hopes of controlling India. In the following decades, the British East India Company gradually increased the size of the territories under its control, either ruling directly or via local rulers under the threat of force from the presidential armies, the vast majority of which was composed of Indian spades, led by British officers. The British and French struggles in India became but one theater of the global Seven Years' War, 1756 to 1763, involving France, Britain, and the other major European powers. The signing of the Treaty of Paris of 1763 had important consequences for the future of the British Empire. In North America, France's future as a colonial power effectively ended with the recognition of British claims to Rupert's Land and the ceding of New France to Britain and Louisiana to Spain. Spain ceded Florida to Britain. Along with its victory over France and India, the Seven Years' War therefore left Britain as the world's most powerful maritime power. During the 1760s and early 1770s, relations between the 13 colonies and Britain became increasingly strained 
primarily because of resentment of the British Parliament's attempts to govern and tax American colonists without their consent. This was summarized at the time by the colonists' slogan, No Taxation Without Representation, a perceived violation of the guaranteed rights of Englishmen. The American Revolution began with the rejection of parliamentary authority and moved towards self-government. In response, Britain sent troops to repose direct rule, leading to the outbreak of war in 1775. The following year, in 1776, the Second Continental Congress issued the Declaration of Independence proclaiming the colony's sovereignty from the British Empire as the new United States of America. The entry of French and Spanish forces into the war tipped the military balance in the Americans' favor, and after a decisive defeat at Yorktown in 1781, Britain began negotiating peace terms. American independence was acknowledged at the Peace of Paris in 1783. The loss of such a large portion of British America, at the time Britain's most populous overseas possession, is seen by some historians as the event defining the transition between the First and Second Empires, in which Britain shifted its attention away from the Americas to Asia, the Pacific, and later Africa. Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations, published in 1776, argued that colonies were redundant and that free trade should replace the old mercantilist policies that had characterized the first period of colonial expansion, dating back to the protectionism of Spain and Portugal. The growth of trade between the newly independent United States and Britain after 1783 seemed to confirm Smith's view that political control was not necessary for economic success. The war to the south influenced British policy in Canada, where between 40,000 and 100,000 defeated loyalists had migrated from the new United States following independence. The 14,000 loyalists who went to the St. John and St. Croix River Valleys, then part of Nova Scotia, felt too far removed from the provincial government in Halifax, so London split off New Brunswick as a separate colony in 1784. The Constitutional Act of 1791 created the provinces of Upper Canada and Lower Canada to defuse tensions between the French and British communities and implemented governmental systems similar to those employed in Britain to assert imperial authority and not allow the sort of popular control of government that was perceived to have led to the American Revolution. Tensions between Britain and the United States escalated again during the Napoleonic Wars as Britain tried to cut off American trade with France and boarded American ships to impress men into the Royal Navy. The United States Congress declared war, the War of 1812, and invaded Canadian territory. In response, Britain invaded the U.S., but the pre-war boundaries were reaffirmed by the 1814 Treaty of Ghent, ensuring Canada's future would be separate from that of the United States. Since 1718, transportation to the American colonies had been a penalty for various offenses in Britain, with approximately 1,000 convicts transported per year. Forced to find an alternative location after the loss of the 13 colonies in 1783, the British government turned to Australia. The coast of Australia had been discovered for Europeans by the Dutch in 1606, but there was no attempt to colonize it. In 1770, James Cook charted the eastern coast while on a scientific voyage, claimed the continent for Britain, and named it New South Wales. In 1778, Joseph Banks, Cook's botanist on the voyage, presented evidence to the government on the suitability of Botany Bay for the establishment of a penal settlement, and in 1787 the first shipment of convicts set sail, arriving in 1788. Unusually, Australia was claimed through proclamation. Indigenous Australians were considered too uncivilized to require treaties, and colonization brought disease and violence that together with the deliberate dispossession of land and culture were devastating to these peoples. Britain continued to transport convicts to New South Wales until 1840, to Tasmania until 1853, and to Western Australia until 1868. The Australian colonies became profitable exporters of wool and gold, mainly because of the Victorian gold rush, making its capital Melbourne for a time the richest city in the world. During his voyage, Cook visited New Zealand, known to Europeans due to the 1642 voyage of the Dutch explorer, Abel Tasman. Cook claimed both the North and the South Islands for the British Crown in 1769 and 1770 respectively. Initially, interaction between the indigenous Maori population and European settlers was limited to the trading of goods. European settlement increased through the early decades of the 19th century, with many trading stations being established, especially in the North. In 
In 1839, the New Zealand Company announced plans to buy large tracts of land and establish colonies in New Zealand. On February 6, 1840, Captain William Hobson and around 40 Maori chiefs signed the Treaty of Waitangi which is considered to be New Zealand's founding document, despite differing interpretations of the Maori and English versions of the text being the cause of ongoing dispute. The British also expanded their mercantile interests in the North Pacific. Spain and Britain had become rivals in the area, culminating in the Nuka Crisis in 1789. Both sides mobilized for war, but when France refused to support Spain it was forced to back down, leading to the Nuka Convention. The outcome was a humiliation for Spain, which practically renounced all sovereignty on the North Pacific coast. This opened the way to British expansion in the area, and several expeditions took place. Firstly, a naval expedition led by George Vancouver which explored the inlets around the Pacific Northwest, particularly around Vancouver Island. On land, expeditions sought to discover a river route to the Pacific for the extension of the North American fur trade. Alexander Mackenzie of the Northwest Company led the first, starting in 1792, and a year later he became the first European to reach the Pacific overland north of the Rio Grande, reaching the ocean near present-day Bella Coola. This preceded the Lewis and Clark expedition by 12 years. Shortly thereafter, Mackenzie's companion, John Finley, founded the first permanent European settlement in British Columbia, Fort St. John. The Northwest Company sought further exploration and backed expeditions by David Thompson, starting in 1797 and later by Simon Fraser. These pushed into the wilderness territories of the Rocky Mountains and Interior Plateau to the Strait of Georgia on the Pacific coast, expanding British North America westward. The East India Company fought a series of Anglo-Mysore wars in southern India with the Sultanate of Mysore under Hyder Ali and then Tipu Sultan. Defeats in the First Anglo-Mysore War and stalemate in the second were followed by victories in the third and the fourth. Following Tipu Sultan's death in the fourth war in the siege of Serengapatam, 1799, the kingdom became a protectorate of the company. The East India Company fought three Anglo-Maratha wars with the Maratha Confederacy. The first Anglo-Maratha war ended in 1782 with a restoration of the pre-war status quo. The second and third Anglo-Maratha wars resulted in British victories. After the surrender of Pasewa Banjara II in 1818, the East India Company acquired control of a large majority of the Indian subcontinent. Britain was challenged again by France under Napoleon in a struggle that unlike previous wars, represented a contest of ideologies between the two nations. 